Welcome to Successful Parenting, where we, Jackie Rue and Robin Choquette, share practical skills for families to build resilience and healthy connections. As practicing professionals and parents ourselves, we hope this podcast is a resource for parents to grow, reflect, and learn more about themselves and their children. Our approach is simple, tangible, and most importantly, we lead with compassion for the integrity of the families we serve. This podcast should not be taken as medical advice and is intended for informational purposes only. We love our work and we can't wait to watch families gain confidence and open themselves up to new ways of successful parenting. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Robin. How are you doing? Things are going well. 2024 is rolling right along. Kids are getting back into the swing. Some have already returned last week, this week. Some kids are starting, I think, today, Monday. How about for you? You know, same thing. I think we're really looking forward to, I know many school districts call this second semester. Many families started the new year with new hopes and really wanting things to be different. You know, we've talked to many families about just goals and things they'd like to see for their children in 2024. As we've talked in previous episodes, there was a lot of stress just in school districts, you know, with shortages and a lot of families still navigating, you know, with younger children getting iPads from schools so early in many districts and just having access to more electronics now than ever, how to navigate it all and how to really support our children in being more confident, more resilient, more connected, more Mm -hmm. able to regulate emotions. And so we definitely have been having lots of conversations about what we want to be doing to have different and more intentional results and connections within our family. Yes, absolutely. I think the confidence, and you say this a lot, Jackie, I think that just is so intertwined with all of those things that you mentioned, the resilience, the connection. I think if we really can find ways to build that confidence, we can really start to see changes for our kids. But I think we get into these patterns and get into kind of doing what we're doing. And sometimes we don't look at the full picture. And it's kind of that old saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, then expecting a different result. And I think we can easily get in in that because we can get frustrated and just keep trying and working harder, right? Well, definitely. It's don't try harder, try different. I had a mom tell me recently that she just keeps getting frustrated with her child and yelling at the child and it just turns into this ugly cycle. And I had another dad tell me that he recognizes he gives in because he doesn't want to fight and he just keeps Mm -hmm. giving in because he doesn't want to have a power struggle. And so for many families, and you can relate and you're a listener, what is something you want to be different? You know, what do you want to kind of instill in your child? Maybe more confidence, maybe more of a relationship, maybe your child to be more tolerant of doing things that they don't want to do or that are uncomfortable. How do you respond in a different way? Because we know as parents, our responses reinforce the child's behavior. And so Mm -hmm. if we pivot and do something different and we do it consistently different for a couple of weeks, we will most likely see a different response from our child, but it's key. So for the mom, that yells a lot. She said that for two weeks, and this was really difficult, her goal was not to yell. And she recognized every time she was about to, she walked away. And what she found was after two weeks, the child started to manage his emotions in a different way. And the father that worked for two weeks on being consistent in saying no and setting boundaries with the child, he noticed that the child at first, the responses escalated and the child became more angry. But then after two weeks, the child settled in and the child started accepting the limits and the boundaries. And so in both cases, it took doing something different and doing it consistently for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think that consistency, as you said, is such a key piece of that. And if we really kind of look at our own behaviors, and that's what you were saying there, our responses, are they reinforcing what's happening here? Or are we moving towards the goals that we have for this child? And I think that helps to slow things down for us to look at it and then re-engage And as you said, Jackie, is that consistency, but really looking at our own responses and making sure, you know, am I responding now of my own needs? Am I responding now to my own fears? Am I responding out to the things that I'm worried about versus looking at what I'm really trying to have accomplished? And that's an important and key piece, a foundational piece of being able to really make change. And a lot of times it is about looking at what we're doing, not in a way that's judgmental. Because I think we can all get into that, right? 
Jackie is being self-critical. Definitely. And as parents, we are self-critical, right? And, right? and the dad who said he has a hard time saying no and setting boundaries, he parents out of guilt right? because he works a lot or the mom yes. that yells a lot, you know, she's just at her wit's end and just completely stressed out. So I think for a lot of us, it's the emotion behind it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And recognizing that the parents that I work with, we talk about what is the function of the behavior and that really helps them. And it also helps, you know, the parent to look at what they're doing. That's such a key piece of it. And as we move forward and making a plan and trying those different things and being consistent. Definitely. And I think letting the child know that you're going to be doing something different. I'm really Mm -hmm. working on not yelling. And so for the next two weeks, I might not respond right away, but I really want to focus on communicating differently with you or I am going to work on saying no, because I know at school, you know, you really struggle. And in this case, the son struggled at school with limits. And so the dad said, you know, I know you struggle at school when teachers have you do something you don't want to do. And so that's why at home, we're going to be doing this different. Sometimes the behaviors may get worse before they get better. But if you're consistent for two weeks, and we know consistency actually helps students or kids with mental health or physical or learning challenges feel safe because they do better with consistency, non-emotional responses and routine, it is almost a guarantee that when you start to shift your response, the child's behavior will change. Absolutely. Well, that's the whole piece of it. If you do something different, people then have to respond different. If you want change to happen, you respond differently, then the other person will respond differently. And that's a key piece in behavioral change. And so if we're able to recognize that, and being able to put it into action, then things can start to change. I think it's hard though. I think parents, and I know for myself, that was always hard. One, it was hard to stop and pause because you're moving and you're going, you know, it's like a puzzle piece each week, each day, putting all the pieces together and then being able to stop and pause and trying not to do it in a critical way, I think is hard. And for parents to recognize that when we talk about these things, it's not something you can just easily kind of do. It takes some work and making sure you have some supports out there that can help you, that can just support you in a way to help you to look at it that you don't feel like they're being critical of you and judging you. And they're also being able to be reflective and helping you look at what are you doing and what are you trying to do. What helped me is just understanding what my triggers were. You know, when my kids were unhappy, I tended to parent out of wanting them to be happy, knowing there were certain times a day that I was more likely to react emotionally. And typically when I was in a hurry or there was a lot going on or at night. And so I was mindful of just not engaging and not responding and walking away because I learned for myself that it was better not to say anything than to get into it with a child, no matter what the age, right? I did not want to end up fighting or power struggling or saying you have to do this because I knew it just invited that. And so just walking away and sometimes not addressing things until the next day. And what I found is most often it didn't need to be addressed or I allowed space for it to be more about holding the child accountable than my reaction. And so when we think about how we want to connect with our children and what we're trying to teach them is the way that we're responding, actually intentionally teaching those things. Or are we more modeling what we really don't want our children to be doing, <laughs> losing it or lacking yes. confidence? Or, you know, we've all said things to our child that are not nice and that we later regret. But just taking a moment to pause and really focusing on what do we want to be different and what is one way as a parent I can change my response. And I even have to do this with my adult children. I've had to be mindful to shift my response is we're in a different place. Yes. My kids even will say, you know, you can come off judgmental. Right. You always have an opinion. And so sometimes the guilt I trip. <laughs> really just trying to listen more and not be judgmental and not always give an opinion, but just more listen and kind of take it in. Mm-hmm. I really do believe that the more we do things different, the more we're going to see different. Absolutely. I think one of the things, and I'm just interested for you, Jackie, for me, taking pause, because I think that's what parents say, okay, how do you take pause? Because that's so hard. One of the things I would do when my kids were little, rely on my breath. When things started getting escalated, as soon as I recognized that, then I would go into some breath work of just breathing deeply. And that would be slowing physical heart rate, all of that down. And then that gave me an opportunity to kind of think more in engaging prefrontal cortex and that upstairs brain, however you want to define it, but it would be able to engage of what is it that I want to do? What is it that I'm trying to 
accomplish here? And just using the breath, I would lean in on that. What would you do? I think, you know, I've shared this before. What I just try to do when I'm in a place where I'm just spinning is really focus on what I want things to look like and just try to behave my way into that ending. Mm -hmm. And I also do, I try the grounding where just tapping into my five senses and looking at the evidence of the situation versus yeah. what ifs or, you know, because what happens is I tend to catastrophize and, you know, out of worry that I react. Isn't that the mother thing in us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're late. And so we know absolutely they've wrecked and they're in the ditch. <laughs> like That's the first yeah. thing. Right. It's our responsibility for them to do well in school for the future. And then pretty soon you're like thinking about their whole future and my child's struggling to not be successful and I've ruined my child. What the hell? What have I done? Because my children are older, I can look at different phases where I'm like, wow, I was not the parent I wanted to be during that phase or that was really bad or, you know, but our children are resilient and we keep showing up and trying and there is no perfect parent. And I think we just really have to do the best we can. Yeah. Absolutely. And they do model what we do and what we say. So I think that's so important to recognize. And as your children get older, that is kind of the fun part to watch them. But I will say, I don't think parenting is any easier when you're parenting adult children. I think it's just different. And practicing patience when they're younger will really help you when you have adult children Mm -hmm. to be able to have patience because that's a huge piece of it. Well, Jackie, I think unless there's something else, I think we are ready to close this session up. What do you think? I agree. I agree. I know this is a very simple one, but this is the one that I would say has made the biggest impact just on parenting. This is the Mm -hmm. one that makes the biggest difference. Yes, absolutely. I would agree. I hope you have a great day and I will see you later. I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us and make sure to subscribe and like us to catch our next episode where we will take you on a journey to find new ways of successful parenting.